In this special episode of Distro Delves, we're going to be looking at OpenSUSE Leap 15.3, which was released in July of 2021, and is a service pack on top of Leap 15. OpenSUSE Leap is the free community edition of SUSE Enterprise Linux, similar to how CentOS and Rocky Linux are community editions of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. We're going to be looking at the XFCE flavor of OpenSUSE because I've already looked at the KDE and GNOME flavors on the show, but never XFCE. Now a large portion of the updates to Leap in 15.3 are just your average package updates. XFCE is now 4.16 and includes a bunch of cool new visual tweaks to make it shine a bit more. Besides the desktop facing stuff, some developer focused packages got some big updates too. TensorFlow, Onyx, Grafana, and Prometheus got updates as well as container technologies like Podman and CubeADM. Some packages were removed or deprecated completely, such as Berkeley DB and the remainder of the KDE4 and Qt4 stack. And probably the biggest yet most transparent changes come from OpenSUSE aligning itself closer to the upstream SUSE Enterprise release. End users probably won't notice these changes at all, but they work to make the distro ever more stable. Now I'm pretty satisfied with what I've seen so far with Leap 15.3 and XFCE. I've lamented the fact that the KDE version of Leap in particular has lost its character and basically blends in with the rest of the KDE desktop, but Leap's take on XFCE is quite good. I think the only negative thing I can say about it really is the dark theme is a bit wonky, but the overall color scheme, the typeface, and font rendering looks really good. The XFCE panel is a bit small for my taste, but that's all adjustable and the default set of apps are reasonable with few, if any, duplicates or broken launchers. And for being a workstation or server-focused distro, it ships with pretty much everything a regular user would need to get going, including a recent version of the full Libre Office Suite. There's of course YAST, which is OpenSUSE System Control Center, which is probably my favorite thing about OpenSUSE. YAST basically exposes a lot of configuration that is usually only accessible through config files. And I don't usually mind messing with config files and CLI commands, but it's super handy to have all of these tools right here in one place rather than spread across a dozen tiny little files across a file system. And one thing that OpenSUSE has never done particularly well is network discovery and printer stuff. There's technically two or more different ways of setting up your printer, but neither of them worked for me. Same with network discovery, I've got a share on my Nextcloud instance in my local network that all of my other computers can find, but OpenSUSE here cannot. Network and printer troubles can be difficult to troubleshoot too, so it's a bummer that these require additional setup or configuration to get running. Codex support isn't great either, but that's easy enough to remedy yourself by installing the right packages, assuming that you know what they are. Video playback was particularly bad, but again, installing a codec pack will make pretty much all of these files playable. Getting Steam and all my games running on OpenSUSE was quick and easy. Steam is available from the default repo, so I just installed it, signed in, plugged in my external drive with all my games on it, and started playing. In the background I've got Elder Scrolls Online with the graphics on medium, and the FPS counter is claiming anywhere between 30 and 50 frames a second, but this feels a little bit closer to 25 to me. I didn't play ESO that much on the Rocky review, but the frame rates feel comparable, though I'm not sure what the graphics preset on there was. So for this new format I wanted to focus a bit more on a performance section, and I want to start logging the stats of each distro so that we can rate and rank them against each other, which is actually something I wanted to avoid. But I think that this adds a bit more spice and makes episodes more interesting. I went back to Rocky 8.4 and gathered some data so we have something to compare it to. I also wrote a handy cross-platform CLI tool in Python to gather some basic data for comparison. I'm not 100% sure how best to display the data on the screen, probably with charts and graphs and stuff, so it'll probably change a bit from whatever format I decided to use here. Comparing Leap 15.3 to Rocky 8.4 is interesting because they're very similar in their use cases, but Rocky is using a much older kernel version, despite having generally newer packages and drivers. For example, Rocky has a newer version of Mesa and GCC, despite Leap having a much newer kernel version. Not that the kernel version really matters there, though. They're both using the same disk scheduler, however OpenSUSE is using BTRFS with snapshots compared to Rocky's XFS file system. 
And probably most notably, Rocky is using GNOME with Wayland, whereas our OpenSUSE install here is using XFCE with a more traditional X server for the display. And basically OpenSUSE Leap edged out on all of these tests by just a tiny margin. The differences here may or may not scale based on hardware, like if I had a faster processor or Intel hardware, but it would seem that OpenSUSE is marginally faster than Rocky Linux in all of these operations. It's worth pointing out that for this test run, Rocky Linux was using GNOME, which is a heavier desktop environment than XFCE desktop, but that shouldn't matter that much here. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with OpenSUSE Leap 15.3. I didn't encounter really any bugs and everything worked as expected. It would be nice if the printer and networking stuff all worked out of the box, but it's not necessarily broken, you probably just need to configure it after installing it. And it didn't work in the previous versions of Leap that I looked at before, so this isn't a regression, this is just a open susism, I guess. I've used XFCE as my daily on other distros before, and honestly I'm just not a huge fan of it, but I can see why people like it. Leap's take on XFCE is definitely one of the better ones I've seen. I hope you liked this special episode of Distro Delves. Be sure to tell me what you think of it in the comments. I think that this format winds up being a bit shorter than previous episodes, but honestly, from the desktop, which is where these reviews take place, most distros wind up being so similar that it's difficult to review them in like an interesting and creative way. I'm hoping that adding some data and rankings will help kind of spice it up and make episodes interesting so that it's not the same review over and over again. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.